Hey, it's Morning Go Back on the, uh, in my back garden. It's a Sunday, 22nd of April. I'm looking at the three papers that I buy. One's actually on a Kindle, one's the Sunday Times, and the other one's the Sunday Business Post. And I'm recording this using a little Sony Xperia phone that my daughter normally uses for her geocaching adventures. Quick news round then in the back garden. I was on Kindle, looking at uh, an article that popped off the three biggest letters in tech, the Boy Genius Report. He's saying developer earning over a thousand dollars per day with a Windows phone game. We've got it. It's called Taptude. And when you think about what they're doing with that, one million daily impressions, making money on the Windows phone, uh, a phone which is still struggling to get market share, but an application development process which works regardless of the, of the app, of the um, kind of iOS or Android or Windows Phone ecosystem that you're on. In the Sunday Times, front page article deals with water charges, labor TDs venting their anger over Phil Hogan, who's setting in process a, a way to get about a thousand euro from every house owner in Ireland, a combination of water, property charges, and other, well, stealth taxes, really. Voters don't understand the fiscal treaty referendum, writes Stephen O'Brien, a political editor, front page of the Sunday Times. The big deal is that uh, you got apathy, but then you also have poor understanding of the fiscal compact. The government basically signed in uh, as a treaty, but the Attorney General recommended that there be a referendum on it. Findings were going to probably worry the yes supporters at the early stages of the campaign since low levels of voter understanding were blamed for previous failures of referendums in Ireland. So, um, uh, it's a guarantee for austerity, but also for prudent financial management of the country. Nissan claims the government's putting brakes on its electric cars. The company says the confusion over grants is why Ireland only has 200 of these eco vehicles. Mark Tai says, he writes the article about Nissan, the Japanese car manufacturer was forced to put the brakes on the production of electric cars for Ireland last year. Lack of clarity is cited from the government grants and a slow rollout of these fast charge points. If you go to Foursquare, you'll spot that there's one at exit 8 of the M8 near where I live. Fewer than 600 people want to prove who, that they're actually Irish. Sarah McInerney writes a story about, uh, surprisingly, here's the number, 353 Americans have applied for proof of their Irish ancestry. 353 happens to be the international dialing code for Ireland, Ireland as well. The story about credit union bailouts are running throughout the papers. There'll be a talking point throughout the week next week. Niall Brady says that about 66 million of the 80 million fund that the credit union set aside for uh, poor loans, well, that's been spent. One uh, credit union received guarantees for 13 million, another for 12 million euro. And what, um, what people are warning is that uh, when new personal insolvency rules are being put into place in Ireland, credit unions are going to get pretty hard hit. Not hit hard is the road going in towards a new uh, plant that Apple's building. The Department of Transportation announced that the National Transportation Authority and Cork City are spending $2.6 million on a one-kilometer road in Cork, in the north side of Cork, Holly Hill where 500 people will take jobs there. Some speculation on Twitter as to whether this 500 people are actually contractors currently employed by Apple and just rolled over to something more permanent. The little boy finds home after 25 years, writes Francesca Angelina. This is a story that ran in Catherine Thomas's uh, slot for John Murray's breakfast show. Interesting. Hollywood studios are, and publishing houses are zeroing in on Saru Burali, eager to buy the story of how he spent seven years in Australia zooming in and out on Google Earth trying to find a home near a waterfall that he remembered. And based on his childhood memories, he did find a city, a small little hole in which he grew up, and he has renewed, um, renewed acquaintances with his mother. Inside the Sunday Business Post, yeah. Vote for the fiscal treaties is the biggest trade union because a gun's pointed at her heads anyway. Dennis O'Brien's going to rise to the forefront, uh, a less molested, a less um, critical role, uh, criticized role as a billionaire in Ireland. He's got a big controlling interest in several media uh, entities in Ireland. He's had those controlling interests for a while. Now he's consolidating his hold there. FOSS is going to announce thousands of training places inside the Sunday Business Post. Nicola Cook, the industry correspondent, says that there's a funding round for 20 million euro allocated to the National Training Fund 
for a new labor market education and training fund. They may benefit from that where I work. And I've let them get to technology, but then again, maybe we won't. And some other points of interest. This one here's got my piqued my interest. It's uh, Sean O'Sullivan. He's on he's on Twitter as SOS Ventures. Richard Kern points out that Sean's got issues with the government, how it uh, doesn't want to attract talented uh, overseas graduates for specific job vacancies because they turn down work permits. O'Sullivan claims that his company alone could hire 10 to 12 well-paid computer programmers if only he could find them. It's not a major educational shortfall in Ireland, he says, but he says a country of just 4.5 million people just can't produce the kind of high-quality programmer that, that he's going to need for his, his adventures, and that's pretty much true around the world. Okay, you can see what we're doing in our back garden by looking at flicker.com stroke Irish eyes. Um, what we have coming out, Peter, Donegan, Sodshow, you'd be happy to see the rose buds and uh, the clematis in blue. Check me out on Twitter at Tuckle. Follow me on audio with that FM Mr. Tuckle if you wish. Or Mia's Adventures with the same phone, the Xperia Arc, as she photographs her life and records videos as we clean up the back garden and make it ready for the summer. I'm Bernie Goldbach. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.